What's good, superstars? Back with another VV video. You got Superstar Rob, and you got Superstar Rob. No one else here with me today, but that's okay because I got all of you. If you haven't already, make sure you smash the subscribe button, you join the Superstar fam, and hit the bell notification because you never know what we're going to hit you with. You don't want to miss what videos we got coming out. You never know when we're going to surprise you with some serious information, so make sure you hit that. Also, become a superstar VIP, $2.99 a month. Get the cool star beside your name. I know some of you are going to use that drop spreadsheet that we offer because Ultraman's coming up. I did my price positions at half, and you know some of you guys said you hope it's that, but it makes sense because this is the traditional Ultraman. Others said maybe your prices are a little bit too high. Go get the spreadsheet. You have a free one in the description below. It gives you three hits. If you want more, become a superstar VIP, and uh, you get more, uh, more. You get five. So. Go take a look. Thank you to all our VIPs. We appreciate your support. And if you're ever looking to talk to us, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. Send us a private message whenever you can. We love to hear from you, and we love to have a discussion about everything as it relates to VV. So, <clears throat> big news today. We had the September VV community update. I actually haven't watched the whole thing yet, but there was a lot of information discussed in this, which is going to be the topic of today's video later on. But in typical fashion, we have Eva, VV University. Make sure you guys check her out, VV University. Uh, she, uh, she was a guest on the channel uh, recently. And uh, yeah, she's, she always does these amazing um, summarizes, uh, summarizations here of, of all the AMAs. And this one looks really, really detailed because there's so much information discussed. So localization, I mean, that's a big one always being talked about when localization it says no exact date, <clears throat> but won't happen until VVs to really to roll out licenses in those specific regions. So we already know they've talked about, you know, I think Reese talked about in one of the AMAs how localization is not as easy as it looks. You got to do everything times three when it's time to, to roll out a new uh, collectible. You got to go and get approval from the licensors in all the different languages and all the different countries. So it's not so easy to do, but let's be honest, okay? English is a universal language. It's okay for now. It's definitely going to help grow the, the the VV user base, but we're in a, a period of time where, for me, if it's not here yet, <clears throat> that's okay. It shouldn't be the priority, in my opinion. There's other things like MCP, OUP, which are way more critical um, before localization. So that, that being that, let me know what you guys think below, but that's my opinion on that. Uh, another one is the API. So well, users have access to the API. They've been talking about this for so long. They said there's going to be a free public API for us to use and then another paid version that will supply more data. As of right now, only the clown, check out Ecomi Wiki, uses one of the only guys that has the API available. So <clears throat> check it out. Great website. Uh, you can use candlesticks, you can use everything charting that you like for the prices. So if you don't know about it, make sure you check it out. Another one is someone, I, they talked about the general timeline of negotiating IP to NFT release. They said it takes... Uh, up to six months to as long as three years. You can imagine with Disney, they talked about Disney in 2018 was the first time they really, really started approaching Disney and it didn't come until a couple years later. So that just goes to show you the amount of negotiations involved in order to make that work. <clears throat> Typical question, when search bar, VV, look, it doesn't matter where you stand on, on the spectrum of FUD to, to, <laughs> to moon. We all know the VV search bar is one of the worst ever. Uh, so it says deathly on VV's list of priorities, but there are more important things. I mean, at this point, based on the users that are here, we're used to it. Yeah, it's terrible, but that's okay. We found ways around it. We searched by brands, whatever. We made it work. Um, so let them deal with OUP, the MCP. That's fine. That search bar, it's going to get fixed. Hashtag soon, eventually. Uh, which brands you like to see on VV? There's so many. They said Saga, but there, there are so many brands that we want to see on VV. There's so many brands that they already have signed up that we haven't seen yet. So we'll be we'll continue to wait uh, early unstaking. So they said that users will be able to unstake their tokens with a ten percent penalty. So this is related, I think, to the OUP here because their staking tier is an OUP, right? Uh, so if you stake, you know, tier one, tier two, tier three, you get different access to different parts of the app, including renting them at the highest stake. So they're saying that you could probably you could get out of it, but you'll you'll lose ten percent. So make sure if you're going to stake, you stick with it because losing ten percent of OMI. Why? Why? That's just wasted money at that point. I hope you have really good reason to sell that only if you're going to take it out or do something else with it. Who knows? Maybe there's going to be in-app incentives that you might want to pull out the stake so you can use that only for something else. 
but definitely want to avoid it if possible. He said there's more comic publishers coming to Vivi. Uh, right now, we're pretty happy with the Marvel. We've got one of the best of the best, but we'll see what else they mean. Maybe some DC. I don't know. Uh, DC seems to be very, you know, open with their IP on different platforms. So we'll see. And, and they're already on there in the collectibles on Vivi. So why not have the comics too? It'd be a perfect compliment. Um, <clears throat> burned NFT supply. So there's been a lot of talk about burning. We've done countless videos on how and re the reasons why Vivi is going to let you burn your collectibles. And we had a lot of pushback, actually. We had people that weren't very happy with the idea of burning collectibles, but it's coming. I mean, it's confirmed. It's coming. We gave like seven or eight different reasons, one of which is that there are just some people out there that have these personalities that just, they just like to watch the world burn, and they're going to just burn for fun. But other than that, there's lots of other good reasons too, one of which are going to be incentives that will be brought into the app that will make you want to burn to gain access to something else. So it's not prominent yet, but when it does happen, it related to today's topic about metadata, it will be seen in the metadata. So we get live information about the number of mint numbers of each of these collectibles. Can you imagine now, you know, somebody starting to burn secret rare Spider-Mans? There's already not many of them. Can you imagine people start burning and start stacking them? It's down to like eight or nine grand, pretty far away down from it's a hundred or 20,000 uh, high. So Maybe it's going to get to a point where somebody who has the dough might decide, you know, what, I'm going to go sweep like even even if I sweep like ten of them, and, and I burn nine, it's a pretty big dent. Slowly, just chip, oh, as time goes on, chipping away at the at the amount that are available for for people. Who knows? Maybe after a few years, this burning is going to really dwindle down the amount of mints available. But we'll see. Um, liquidity, uh, liquidity is a big issue, uh, and they're hoping to bring in more. We know that right now with cash out, money's coming out of the app. But maybe with OUP, uh, you know, crypto, paying all these things will bring liquidity back. The market obviously right now is hurting pretty bad. So, um, and they've they've shut down some a few things. So hopefully we get that back soon. Um, and then can you give us some unreleased information? I know they're coming close on the OUP. Okay, they're coming close. So it says here that unlike the first OUP article, all users will be able to transact with OMI without staking for most items. However, the staking tiers will be the only way to get certain app and app benefits. I like this because OUP, it just makes sense. Like OMI right now, I don't know if you guys have done it. It's such a pain. When I buy OMI, I got to go to like BitBuy, which is like a Canadian exchange. And then I got to like buy it with like an e-transfer. And then I got to take that, get Ethereum from there, and then take my Ethereum, bring it over to BitForex. And then from BitForex, I got to like switch it to USD and then get OMI. And so you could just see what's going on. And I've never even converted it to layer two. Supposedly that's a whole other thing in and of itself. So it's, it's, a, it's a process. It's a process. And that people don't like processes. People like quick and convenient, which is the reason why Vivi's done so well. It's brought NFT and not just any NFTs. It's brought premium NFTs to the masses by just simply downloading an app, you know, using your credit card, and buying these NFTs. And they're kind of like the custodian of them. And that onboarding, that ease of onboarding has been a big contribution to the success of Eevee. So that will be the same thing for OMI. They need to make sure that OMI is easy to buy. Why not have it in app? Buy OMI in app directly and then use it in app directly. I think this is what they're going with this. So that's a very exciting time, especially for people who are obsessed with OMI being burned, such as OMI Daily Burn. If you haven't already, make sure you follow Omi Daily Burn because he's obsessed with tracking Omi. He says that we had a slow September at 2.4 billion. 2.4 billion sounds like a lot, but in the amount of circulating supply, it's not. So 2.4 million billion Omi Burn drops weren't selling out, which we know, which contributes to less Omi being burned, um, and there and there was also less drops overall. Live metadata next week. This is a really, really big deal. I really want to talk about this. Uh, it's going to be, I said, I said on Monday, I think he said, will be the first drop that we're going to see. And then because there's like 7 million mints, they said it's going to take another four to six weeks. Although we should know by now, you can't take these timelines as the law because you never know what it's actually going to be. But we'll, for now, let's just say four to six weeks for a full roll of all tokens. And things are going to get real interesting after that. Um, another thing that they mentioned, and this wasn't in, I don't think it was shown in have a summary there. Collectibles 
they plan on these collectibles that are not sold out in stores. It's kind of opposite. I didn't expect them to do this because David, you said that they would almost welcome having collectibles in the store that could be bought if that's what you like. But they're, they're throwing a curveball here because now they're saying that there's going to be a time limit. So you're going to go into the store, you could buy it, but then they're going to give a warning and saying, this is your last chance. After this day, the rest of the collectibles will be burned. Super interesting. That's going to change the game. That's going to completely change the game because now you have a draw that's let's say has 10,000, the Star Wars, right? You have like 10,000 mints. Only 4,000 got minted on the draw. Then they do this last warning, another 2,000 get bought. All of a sudden now, this went from a 10,000 mint collectible down to 6,000. And you can't buy it in the store anymore. That completely changes the secondary market. When that comes, it's going to be a new flipping strategy for sure. It's going to have its own strategy. We did a video once talking about the different strategies that you could implement in VV to try to gain and profit. That is going to be another one when they allow this burning of, uh, of collectibles from the store. Because once you can't buy it in the store anymore, you've lost that measure, right? Like the secondary market's going to go under the listed because you can always go to the store and buy one. So people are just trying to sell it off, recover gems, and then go back and buy some more maybe um, in order to try to go for, let's say, the ultra rare secret or whatever it ends up being. That's going to be gone now. So they're going to have to now say, okay, I got to go to the secondary market to buy this collectible. And it's going to change the whole dynamics. And I think, I think that there's going to be a lot of opportunity there and eventually the market will adapt, but definitely at first. So that's going to be cool. So there'll be a time limit to buy and then the rest will get burned. Crypto pay is coming shortly and then common, uncommon supply to get rarer editions. So pretty cool. Omi Daily Burn, check them out. Um, you definitely want to see what he has to offer every time on Twitter. Uh, Mitchell Locklear, superstar VIP Mitchell Locklear, longtime supporter. He says that he got a superstar blessing onto the Star Wars drop with a nice three-digit mint, which is fantastic. Congratulations to you. We are very happy. And here's Joe. Look where he is. Look what he's doing. Look what he's doing. You can't hear this right now. I'm listening. There, oh. there we go. By now, he had to do it. I would have done the same thing. You're in the ride. He went. He bought it. I think it was the 00340 mint. So I think he had no choice. He did the right thing. Okay. So today's video, I want to talk about this as the topic. So the announcement, we always knew metadata was coming and we talked about it, you know, obviously talking about, you know, VV every single day, we've talked about metadata and how crucial it's going to be. But I want to remind everyone since it's, it's here of how important this is going to be. Metadata is so important in general for all NFTs. It is the way to verify it. it, is the way to prove ownership. It is so important to get that information out there in more of a public domain than just having it in VV. And it's going to help legitimize these NFTs. But there's more benefits in terms of where we can use the data. And, and, and Dan said he's so excited to see what the community will come up with um, in terms of tools that we can use in order to help us maneuver the VV marketplace. So one reason why I wanted metadata in the past was when we had that kind of fake bull pump, the bull trap, if you want to call it, where all of a sudden you had Vader, you had partner statue, you had all of these grail NFTs pump, but it didn't make sense. Joe and I were making videos saying, don't we, we made it. We said, don't get caught in a VV pump and dump, right? We, we were looking at the data and it didn't make sense. New money wasn't coming into the app anymore. So we, how was this pump happening? If new money wasn't coming in the app, where was the pump coming from? You didn't have new users in the app. Basically, we determined that it was the whales who did a, you know, a coordinated attack, cleaned up the floors, created the hype. And then as they created hype, Random, you know, average users joined in in hopes to try to profit, thinking it was going to go to 10,000. That was when Todd, I remember, that was during the time period where people were saying, will Todd hit 10,000 before 1,000? Obviously, it's going to hit 1,000 first. Obviously, like it was a massive bear market, but it pumped Todd from 2,000 to 4,000. And of course, Todd is now at 1,000. So this is just what happens. And if you had the data to see that the whales were doing this, you might have been able to not jump in if you didn't if you didn't realize that the money wasn't coming to the app and you backed out during that time period. We were saying, you know, don't jump into this. You might get caught in a pump and dump. 
and you could check out the video and go back to verify. Um, but like with, with this information, now we can actually track wallets and say, okay, if you look at my screen here, right, we can actually go and filter by the top hundred of you wallets. And I don't know exactly, this is on a muta scan. If you don't know what muta scan, you can actually look to see what's happening on mutable X. I don't know exactly how the, how it's going to look in here. I'm assuming we're going to have more information. Like for example, token image, right? I'm wondering to see if it comes in here, but this is the data we have right now. We have the ID, we have the wallets here, and we have the token ID, right? So you click the token ID, you can see that this token was minted and it was sold. So as more time comes on, I'm very interested to see what the, the full amount of data and meta, the metadata that they're going to attach this. Um, and then, and then you could start saying, okay, where, you know, is this is a Vader. Where did this Vader start? Where did it go? And how many whales are buying Vaders right now? I think that's super important to understand what's happening with them. And you could say how many Vaders are being stacked or how many of this collectible are being stacked? How many of this collectible are being burned to help you make better decisions? This information is going to help us make better decision about collectibles. What if we start getting cool pie charts? The community start making cool, cool pie charts and saying, okay, this many Vaders are currently being stacked. Or, you know, of these 10,000 mints, 5,000 of them are on wallets with three or more. So you know they're being stacked. And then you can say, okay, well, this is one that's being stacked. Maybe I want to stack this one too, because I already know that the number of unique owners is actually way less than the number of mints. And maybe I have opportunity to profit. For example, another one will be live burn collectibles, which we talked about in the summary. You're going to know exactly which collectibles are being burned live, not just from the store, but these are normal users. And we might start seeing live mint numbers of all these different collectibles as they get burned, it starts adjusting the valuation because the more they get burned, the more scarcity it is, the more value it should be as things balance out. Um, and I think that you can even see potentially, I'm assuming you'll be able to see even valuable mint numbers that might get burned. Because if you're a mint hunter and you love very valuable mint numbers, you might say, okay, of the two digits, how many of the two digits got burned? So if only 40 to 99 are available, you might, I mean, I don't know who's going to do this, but I'm sure someone's going to do it. You might start seeing that for whatever reason, this collectible that's really cheap and where you can buy a two digit mint for like maybe a couple hundred gems, someone goes and sweeps a whole bunch of them and burns a bunch of them. So it went from having 40 to 99. He burnt everything from, let's say like, thir uh, sorry, 60 to 80. And now the number of two digits has gone even less, giving it more value. That can happen in the comic world, right? We talked about Marvel Comics number one, 60,000 mints, but there's only so many from 500 to 999. There's only so many three digits that you can buy that, that trade at quite a premium. Somebody might start burning those too. So your three digit mints on some of these elite comics, for example, or whatever it ends up being now are worth even more. So I, I think trackers are going to be built. I'll call them grail trackers, right? This metadata will bring in these, these grail trackers where you can start seeing, you know, all the Vaders, where, where are all of them? How many are being traded every day? How many Vaders are traded per day? What's the volume of this collectible being traded per day? All this information is going to become available to us. And, and, and Komi Wiki does a great job with that. You can already see all that. But I feel like once it gets out there and it's more for the public, you may start seeing more information in terms of the actual percentages or for the grail tracker, even more than that, it's maybe it's your favorite person. Maybe, you know, Dr. Profit's wallet address, you find him, you find his wallet address through MetaMask, you know, he owns this collectible. And now you can check his wallet and see all of his buys and sells all the time. What's he, what's he stacking? What's he selling off? Maybe you're going to see, wow, I check every day. Dr. Profit is selling off this, this grail. I'm going to, I have that grail. I'm going to sell it too, because I'm going to try to get in before everybody else jumps on. Is it going to lower the price? I don't know. I'm just speculating information. The more information you have, the higher your probability that you will make a better decision. So these are my thoughts on the metadata on why it's going to be important. This isn't news. We've known it's been coming for a long time, but since it's right around the corner coming Monday, I just want to do a video with a refresher of why it might be valuable and what maybe you might do with it. Um, I know for me personally, 
I'll be looking right away to some of our some of our uh, our data miners. We got VB Fox out there. It'll be cool to see what she does with this information. Obviously, we got a whole bunch of amazing people in the community um, that can probably do some very very uh, fun and valuable uh, tools they can create to to make it helpful. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it's easy enough that even we can make a tool. Um, but we'll see on Monday how it looks. I'm assuming it'll be available on MuseScan. I really don't know. Um, I don't know the specifics of exactly how it's going to be. I've seen the metadata on other NFT projects. I just don't know how it's going to be with VV. So um, it should be similar, I would think, with all the different attributes. And all the, you will see different attributes for, for all the different information. Let me know what you guys think uh, about the metadata. Let me know below if there's any other use cases you could think of on how it's going to be super important uh, for for us to use that information, how we can benefit from the information other than the ones that I've already described. Would you actually find that useful? Do you think that for now, just the way the market is, maybe it's just it's going to be there and you're, you're not going to really look at it? Or do you think that when it starts coming, you know, the next four to six weeks, let's say you're going to be really digging in there and it might change your buying behavior. Do you plan on change your buying your behavior when this metadata comes in? Let me know below. Love to hear what you guys think. And also, don't forget, make sure you smash the subscribe button, join the superstar fan, hit the bell notification. You don't know what we're going to hit you with. We got lots coming and, you know, VV's coming out with news. So they got to, they got to, we got to get that information out there. You get the bell button. You're always going to make sure that you're up to date with the latest news as well as some of the interesting things that are always happening in the VV world. Also become a superstar VIP, $2.99 a month. We'll bring as much value as we possibly can to our VIP membership. So don't forget, hit, hit the subscribe button, join the VIP membership if you haven't already. And thank you guys all so much. We will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.